everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool diamond fold box that I came up with. I actually made this first during my Facebook Live and now I'm putting it into a YouTube video because I know lots of people like to have this to go back to and you know you can stop and start and all that kind of stuff. It's a great size. This one I think I measured it up at six by, let's have a little look, six by eight I think it was. Yeah, so it's a great size and then it just opens from the top and then it opens up like this. So you can see, you can fill everything in here. And during the live, lots of people were saying how this would make a really nice gift for a baby shower. And I said, you know, you can definitely fit, you know, a couple of baby grows, some little booties, some bibs, lots of stuff in there, along with other things as well. You change your colors and you can have this for a masculine gift as well as a feminine gift. I've gone very pink and girly, but you just change up your colors there. And you know, you can have this pretty much for any occasion. It would be great to put a wedding gift in and obviously for your birthdays and things like that as well. So it's pretty straightforward. Don't be put off by the shape. I've broken it all down. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so the papers I've used are from this one. Now it is an older one. I picked this up from the works, oh gosh, probably towards the end of last year. It was three pound, but I'll have a little look, see if I can source anybody online selling it and I'll share the links below as always. But it's beautiful. I've made some really nice projects with this one over the months. And then I have used this one here, which although it's a Ponsettia flower, so it's a Simply Made Crafts uh, Ultimate Ponsettia die set. This is now back in stocks. This did sell out and um, I created that beautiful big bouquet with this and I'll link that up here because you might be interested to have a look at look to have a little look at that one and um, yeah I used that to make this so just change the colours and you can still make really nice flowers and um, I think it was Marianne in the group chat she said if you just were to round off the corners there it will turn it into a very different looking flower so I've just already done that one if you'd like to see how I made that then just check out the link to the Facebook live and you'll see me put that one together and then I've just got a few bits and pieces there so we'll get straight into the main bag and I've already done one half. So this is what we're going to achieve is this shape here. We're gonna have two of them. You can kind of see how that shape comes together. So you want two pieces. I'm gonna use the craft card today. I haven't used craft card for such a long time. And I thought against this lovely, you know, against all those lovely soft pinks, it works really well. So this is a piece of eight and a quarter by 11. And along the eight and a quarter side, you want to score at one and one eighth and seven and one eighth. So it's slightly odd scoring there, and that's purely because I wanted the inside width to be six, and then I wanted to maximize the whole width of our A4, which is eight and a quarter, so that's why I've got that measurement. So one and one eighth, and seven and one eighth. Then rotate it and score at six and a half. And you wanna do that on another piece, so two pieces like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to cut up both of those. You might wanna fold and burnish first, actually, but you're just gonna cut up to the first score line and then I'm just going to fold and burnish. Okay, like so. Again, you'll do that on your other piece. And then you want the longer piece to go over the shorter one and bring it up to a right angle. So the longer one over the shorter one. So I'm just going to cover that one, eight, one and one eighth of an inch area there and just bring that one over. Make sure you get a really nice clean angle because that's all going to be on show. That does create the base of your gift bag. And then again, the longer one over the shorter one. I mean, you can do it the other way. It's just, I think you get a nicer finish by doing the longer one on the top. And then again, just bring that one over. Okay. And then you just want to take some chunks off of all four corners. Now you may well have to go into them again when we go to put it together, but for the minute, you just want to cut on an angle. So they kind of line up, you can see there. If you want to lay a ruler down and stuff you can, but I'm just, you know, eyeballing all of this, like so, like so, okay, and then you will have another one like this. We're going to flip one over, and you can see how it's going to come together like this. Don't worry about all this not lining up, it's not going to make any difference, but that is what you want to have. Okay, next you want four pieces of four and a half by six and a half, okay, and you're going to score two from the top left to the bottom right. So I'm just gonna pop it in the style, my scoreboard here. If you've got, if you, you know, if you want to, 
mark like where the six inches you can put some people put a black line through their tracks they mark it like um, three inches six inches and nine and put black lines through here I don't do that on this school board because this is the one that I do a lot of my commission work with and sometimes I have to take photos of step by steps and if it's covered in black lines it doesn't look good so that's the reason I don't do it I have done it on my older school boards but I just will, you know, sit my um, stylus in the track and do it this way. I'm picking the six inch marker just because it's in the middle. You can use any one, but you want to then score right through the middle. So from that top left down to this bottom right. Keep it here and then go to the six and a half or whatever marker you're at, you want to go across half an inch and score again. Okay, so that's the top left to the bottom right. And you want to do that twice. So you can see there. What you're then going to do is remove make sure you're removing the right half you want to make sure that you've got your score line from point to point and then whatever score line is next to that is the one that you're cutting down like so so we've got two from the top left to the bottom right then you want to do two from the top right to the bottom left and you'll see where that was those two same size pieces but I'd already gone and cut it ahead I got ahead of myself but if you imagine I've popped it in my scoreboard and again I've scored through there okay like so so there's that six and then this time you want to come this way so then at five and a half and score okay and then again cut down make sure you've got your point to point score line and it's the one whatever's next to that is the one you want to cut down and you'll see you'll have two like that so I've got two that cut from the top right down to the bottom left and two that cut from the top left down to the bottom right all of these pieces you you know don't throw them away I mean they're good scrap sizes but also they're really good to mat the inside of this box if you decide to because you can obviously well it depends on what colours you're using but you can flip them over and everything but you'll now have these four pieces and then again you want to fold and burnish all of those score lines Okay, and while I've got the scoreboard out, you also want this piece here, which is for the closure. This is a piece of three and a half by six. And along the three and a half side, you just want to score at half an inch. And then this piece of pattern paper on top measures two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And I've just rounded off the corners there with my corner punch, and that's all ready now for me to attach. And you also want this piece here, which is for the hinge. And this is a piece of two by six. And along the two inch side, you want to score at one inch. And again, fold and burnish. Next, we'll attach our hinge. So I'm gonna bring in my stronger glue for this, just so we've got a nice, very strong base to the gift bag. And I'm just going to cover one side, first of all. And then you're going to attach it to the short side. So you've got your longer side and the short side. You want to go inside and line up the score line right to the edge. Okay, so again, it's that short side. It's like an L shape. You're sticking it on the end of, and then you've got your hinge. And then again, add your glue all to this side here. And then if you just open this one up, again, lie that score line, butt it right up. If you want to mitre the corners here, take a little chunk off, you can. But if you just bend it and make sure you see there, I've got a really nice join. You can see there, okay? So just burnish that. Okay, so again, now we can see this shape coming together. Now these pieces here, you will have sat on top like this. Now, what you want to make sure is, can you see, it doesn't quite go right to the corner there, and that is because I can take a little bit off of one of these bits here. So this is why I said don't worry too much at the beginning, because you may find that you take a little bit more off as you go. There you go. Can you see it perfectly fits into that corner there, and that's what you want, is that perfect finish. So what I'm going to do is add my glue on here so, and then I can sit that over there. Flip it over and just push that into the corner and you want this flap to be like this because it will just help with the closure. If you don't have that flap 
the sides just will not close up neatly and it will probably have a gap and you'll be able to see whatever gifts inside by having this little bit here it makes all the difference and this is where you can see now with your these pieces here if you decided you wanted a mat layer because you don't want to see the joins then you can pop that over the top you can see there okay so if you do want to reinforce it again if you're using the cloud glue and you reinforce it with these it's just going to make it even stronger okay so now we've got one side to our bag then I can take one of the other ones again sit it on it always lay it down first so I can see here it's not quite flush see there's a little bit here that's because that one's still not been cut back enough so always test it first and then glue now that's perfect so I'm going to do this now on all three of those corners with these three pieces Okay, so that's all the sides to my gift bag. So then if you just make sure the tabs are kind of just folded in like so, but you'll see when it goes together, you get a really nice finish. You can see all the corners there, everything all lines up really nicely. Don't worry if it moves from side to side a bit once we put our Velcro dot in place and that will hold that there. So now we can stick this piece on. So it's up to you what side you attach it to. Um, again, I'm just gonna pop my glue on there. So I think I'm going to do this one here. So I'm just going to fold it over, make sure it lines up, just fold it over like so. Okay, and then that will come over the front and we'll put our Velcro dot there once we've done our mats and layers. So moving on to these, I have this beautiful colour here and I've got two there that are going to go on the front. So you can see how that all works together. So these two here are five and three quarters by six and a quarter. So it's a, if you've got a directional paper, make sure you know your five and uh, three quarters is what's the width there. Okay, so that's how it's going to sit. So it's a slight re um, rectangle. So two pieces there. Then I've got these two pieces for these sides here and these measure four and a quarter by five and three quarters. Okay. And then I've got these pieces here, which are going to be for your four triangular parts. And these here measure four by five and three quarters. And these ones, you just want to cut two, you want to cut one, sorry, so it's from the top left to the bottom right. Like so. The other one you want to do from the top right to the bottom left. Now if it's directional, you're going to want to do two again because if you flip this around it's going to be the wrong way up but because mine's plain it doesn't matter now you know I can turn these you want two like that and two like that and you can see how they will sit perfectly on your side piece like that okay so I've got those four and that's everything and then I've got my flower which I'm going to attach at the end with some hot glue and I've also got my velcro dots there to secure the closure Okay, so there are all the mats and layers all stuck down. I've attached my flower there and the Velcro dot. Once you add your mats and layers, it really does show that really cool shape. I love this. So I'm just going to carefully make sure my Velcro dot's attached there. Because you can only add so much pressure. But if you just prise it open and then you can go in and really push that down. And that one as well. And then I'm going to add my ribbon handle. So if I just open this up, when I done the live, I came in, I think it was one and a half from each side. So one and a half, I'm just going to put a little pencil mark right on the score line there. This is optional, you might want to keep yours more as a gift box style. And then I'm just going to use this screw punch here and very carefully just punch right on the score line there, my two holes. And then I've got this ribbon here. I've got a long enough piece. I think what I'll have to do with this one, slightly different to how I've done the other one, is I'm going to tie a knot on that one. And then I'm going to 
feed it through and then I'm going to feed it back through this one and then hand it aside I think that's about okay there just tie that off there now you can see you've got your handle and then I'll just use this piece because it's the last bit left of this ribbon now just to have a bow on the other one again you can watch it during the live I actually just tied it all together and um, threaded the whole thing through and then tied it off with a bow um, but I don't think I it would have been quite the right length of ribbon so I'm just going to do it this way instead like so and then we've got that bow detail and that's it done so I'll just bring back in the other one there so you can see this one with the craft card and those lovely soft pastel pinks and then this one here I actually used the pink cardstock now this was a 216 GSM tonic studio cardstock this is a 300 GSM so you can use a lighter weight because by the time you add your mats and layers and if you're using the cloud glue it will make it very very strong um, and this you know feels just as strong now as this here as well so but there they are two diamond fold gift bags I think they're absolutely gorgeous and um, yeah I'm probably going to make some gift tags for these as well because I've got lots of scraps left over but what I'll do is I'll link up my handbag gift bag playlist I've got hundreds on there and there's some really unusual styles as well so check that out and I'll also pop another gift bag that I think is kind of similar in terms of like faceted multiple sides to it then um, yeah click on that one as well because you might enjoy it and also there's my face there if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to catch more tutorials just click on that one and you'll be notified when I next upload a tutorial so thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye